Hi, this is Dr. Hold. I want to go over calculus, the squeeze theorem. I uh, want to talk a little bit about the uh, theorem itself and then throw you, show you three examples which I think will help you. Um, the squeeze theorem. In teaching the squeeze theorem, one thing I've noticed regarding students is t students tend to struggle with this theorem. They really don't know when to apply it. Um, where you're going to apply this is basically when you get a usually a trig type function where you're trying to take the limit of the trig function is maybe x goes to infinity or x goes to zero and you have no y way of solving it. Well you can break it into separate pieces and be able to solve the limit. So what the squeeze theorem basically says is this. If I can find out what the limit of g of x is as x approaches c and find out it's going to be equal to l and then I can also take another function and take the limit of that function as x approaches c and it also goes to l then I know that my middle function that's between these two must also approach L as X approaches C. So that's the basics of, of the uh, squeeze theorem. Let's look at some problems because it makes a lot more sense when you work problems. Um, the first example is really a very, very easy limit. Uh, we're going to look at the limit of X squared times the cosine of X as X approaches zero. Okay, with a problem like this, the first thing you want to do is you want to look at just the trig function itself. We know the range of the cosine of x will vary between negative 1 and 1. So we go ahead and write that down. And we know that the cosine of x will be greater or equal to negative 1 and will be less than or equal to 1. All right. So now all you want to do is start adding things back in or multiplying things back in. You want to get the x squared in. So if I, to get the x squared in, I can put the x squared right here and multiply it by the cosine of x. But to do that, I've got to multiply both sides by the, by the x squared. So this becomes minus x squared less than or equal to the x squared cosine x. And this would be positive x squared. All right. So now, once you have this part exactly as way you had in the beginning, you just have to take the limit of this side and this side. So I'm going to take the limit as x approaches 0. Make the arrow a little bit better there. Of negative x squared. Okay, as x approaches 0, this function here is going to go to 0. All right, we'll take the right side and we take the limit of x squared as x approaches 0 in this case, and we're also going to get 0. So what we've been able to do is we've been able to sandwich this function between 0 and between the two functions. So in this case, the limit of that function also has to go to 0. So the answer in this case would be the limit of x squared times the cosine of x as x approaches 0 must also be 0 because we sandwich the function between. All right, let's look at another one. This one is a little bit more complex. Um, let's see here. I'll grab a piece of paper. We're going to take this function here. We're going to take the limit of 2 plus the cosine of x over x plus c as x approaches infinity and try to solve that. All right, we're going to do this with the squeeze theorem. So again, start out with the cosine of x. You know the range of the cosine of x will be between negative 1 and 1. So we know it's greater than or equal to negative 1. And we know it's less than or equal to 1. All right, so now we're going to start adding things back in. We need to add, well, it doesn't matter whether you work with the denominator first or the numerator. But we want to add 2 to this. So if I add 2 plus the cosine of x here, I must also add 2 to this and 2 to this. So that becomes less than, or I'm sorry, the, the 2 plus cosine x would be 2 plus negative 1. That's going to give me a 1. So in this case, 2 plus cosine of x so has to be greater than or equal to 1. And it also must be less than or equal, less than or equal to 3. All right. So all I've done in this case, I've added 2 to the left side and 2 to the right side. All right, now I want to start adding in the x plus 6. I'm going to divide everything by x plus 6. I'm going to divide this side in the middle by x plus 6, which means I have to divide this side by x plus 6, which means I have to divide this side by x plus 6. All right, so now I have exactly what I wanted right here. So all I have to do is apply the limit here and here and solve the problem. If I take the limit of 1 over x plus 6 as x approaches infinity in this case I will get a huge number in my denominator which means this function will go to 0. If I take the limit of 3 over x plus 6 as x approaches infinity again 
my denominator is becoming huge, so in this case I'll get zero. So again, I've sandwiched the function between the two other functions, so my limit of two plus cosine of x as x plus c as x approaches infinity has to equal zero. Slide it up so you can see it. And that is the solution to that limit. All right, so most of these are pretty simple. A lot of these will go to zero, not in all cases, but it, but in a lot of cases it will. All right, let's look at something a little bit more difficult. Let's look at this function where you're actually squaring the function. I have the limit of the cosine squared of 3x and 3 minus 6x. All right, so again, start with your basic. We'll start with the cosine of 3x. All right, we, again, the 3 does not change the range of the function. All right, so we know in this case it has to be less than or equal to 1 and greater than or equal to negative 1. All right, again, the 3 makes no, does not affect the range of this function. All right, so now let's go ahead and we're going to, we need to go ahead and square this. So we're going to square both sides. So that's, if I square the negative 1, I'll get 1 less than or equal to the cosine of 3x, and I've squared this, and I square this, and I get 1 also. All right, so in this case, I got 1 on both sides, so we're getting there. All right, my last thing I have to do is I need to divide both sides, or all three sides, by 3 minus 6x. So I'll do my middle first, 3 minus 6x. I'll divide this by 3 minus 6x. I'll divide this by 3 minus 6x. All right, I have the middle exactly like I want, so now it's time to take the limits. I will take the limit of just one of them because they're both the same. If I take the limit of 1 over 3 minus 6x, as x approaches infinity, okay, again, my denominator is getting very, very large. Even though it's getting large in, times, in terms of negative, because I got a negative number here, it's going to negative infinity. 1 divided by negative infinity will give me 0. And we obviously this is the same thigh, same side or same value. So what we've been able to do is we sandwich the function between the two functions. And since their limits go to zero, our function has to go to zero. So let me slide this up and we'll go ahead and write that down. So the cosine squared of 3x over 3 minus 6x, the limit of that as x approaches infinity must equal zero. All right, there's three examples. Um, I hope you find this useful. Again, the sandwich theorem is not that difficult. Just break it down into little parts and then slowly start adding the parts back in through multiplication, through addition, subtraction, whatever. And then once you got the middle exactly like you want it, go ahead and solve the limit for the left side, solve the limit for the right side. See if you get the same value that, that, that allows you to sandwich the function between the two other functions and then you know what the value is. Best of luck. Talk to you next time.